Hey there, and welcome back. Really excited about the video we got in the works here for you. Now, if you caught my last one, you know I gave into the peer pressure, and I'm now shooting 6R. Really love shooting this. Really excited about the performance I'm seeing out of this 14 and a half inch upper. In that video, you saw me shoot this with consistency out to and beyond a thousand yards. Really great shooter. I'm putting more and more rounds through it to get more and more experience, and so far, I'm really happy with it. Now, in that video. And through Instagram, I've received a ton of comments and messages around 6 arc and how it stacks up to other common DMR type calibers. So what I want to do in this video is find out. So I brought out my 14 and a half inch 556 upper, which is probably similar to what many of you might be shooting in a DMR type role. What we're going to do in this video is shoot them side by side, exact same conditions, exact same targets and ranges, and find out exactly how they perform in the real world beside each other. So if you like the sounds of that, stick around. What we're going to do in this video is move into a quick gear review where I'll go over each of the setups, the ammunition that we're running, and then we'll move down to the range and we'll shoot from 100 yards all the way out to at least 800, which is probably maybe the max of where a DMR type rifle might be employed. And if we're getting consistent performance, we'll keep on pushing further just to see how far we can push each of these uppers and give you a side-by-side -side comparison of 6 arc versus 5.56. So, if you like the sounds of it, stick around. Let me know in the comments, how do you think these are gonna perform? What do you think we're gonna see for differences? Do you think there will be differences? So with that, let's get started. Before we start shooting, let's take a close up look at the gear we're gonna run in this video. My goal is to run two uppers that are very closely matched so that we can truly compare the calibers and not say one upper has Gucci gear and the other one doesn't. In my opinion, both of these uppers are very similarly matched and will give us a great idea of how these two calibers stack up against each other out of a 14 and a half inch barrel. So from there, what else are we running? For a lower, I've got my Knights SR15 SBR lower. You've seen it many times on the channel. It's got a Knights two-stage trigger in it and a B5 precision stock that I like. So very effective and it'll make hits out at distance. You've seen it many times. I think running the same lower on each upper will keep things fair there. Next up, the 6 arc. This is the exact same upper that you saw in my last video. Running a 14 and a half inch Faxon barrel. It's one and eight twist with carbine length gas. Now this barrel has a great price point and so far I'm really happy with the accuracy I'm seeing out of it. Bolt carrier group is also Faxon. So those are both from Faxon and so far they've been working very well, very reliable. Receiver itself is a BCM. It's got a Geisley charging handle. And it's got a Daniel Defense RIS-3 rail. So in my mind, this might be like a Block 2 improved type upper. I just kind of like the look. I wanted to try the new RIS-3, and that's what we've got here. For a suppressor, this is the Surefire 762 SOCOM Mini. You've seen it many times on the channel. Very versatile suppressor. It'll knock the noise down. Probably not the world's quietest can, but for me, it's effective. For an optics package, on both uppers, you're going to see a Night Force 4 to 16 Attacker F1 with a Trimmer 3 reticle. I really like this 4 to 16 magnification for both of the calibers we're going to be shooting, and I love that Trimmer 3 reticle. Very effective for making hits out at distance. Now this upper just happens to have the Raptar on it because I was shooting this at night recently. The Raptar is zeroed five mils below my zero or my hundred yard zero, so that way. It puts illumination down in the reticle where I'm shooting at distance at night. So this won't have any impact on what you're seeing for results. It's just on there for ranging. Maybe I'll use it a couple times in the video. So that's the six arc upper. What are we shooting for ammo? Out of the six arc, I'm gonna run Hornady Black 105 BTHP. Now earlier today, I actually shot this upper at 100 yards to confirm zero groups and velocity. And I'm seeing a velocity of about 2545 average out of this 105 BTHP out of this 14 and a half inch barrel. And for groups, I'm seeing them right in the one MOA range today. Maybe that's me, but if I'm seeing one MOA, I'm happy that's very effective out at distance. And I think you'll see that in the rest of the video. Now, really excited as Duramag actually stepped up and they provided the magazines that were gonna run in both calibers so this happens to be their 6.5 Grindel, or it'll work with 6 Arc Mag, and this is their 5.56 Mag. So Duramag, these are really solid. I actually bought one of these, not even realizing it was Duramag, when I first got the 6 Arc. Yes, I'm limited to 10 rounds here in Washington, but so far, really happy with the performance. 
and I think you'll see them work really well here in the video. They've got all kinds of colors. They have larger capacities. If you live in a state outside of one like mine that bans higher capacities, but really excited about these Duramags, really thankful for them stepping up and sending them my way to use in content. So you'll see these on both calibers that I'm shooting. The 5.56 upper is gonna be the same upper you've seen many times on the channel. This started out live as a Colt 6920. I swapped it over to a 14 and a half inch Colt SOCOM weight barrel. One and seven twists with carbine gas. Everything else is Colt and it shoots quite well. Daniel Defense RIS 2 front sight post rail, maybe an old school block two. And I've got it also set up with a Night Force 4 to 16 Attacker F1, trimmer three. And I failed to mention both scopes are in a spur mount. So optics package is the exact same. Barrel lengths are the exact same. Really think these are very fairly matched. Suppressor is an old school Surefire 212 suppressor. So this is pre-SOCOM era. It's a 5.56 can. It's pretty low blowback. I've got a ton of rounds through this can. So really like this upper. Think it'll get the job done. For ammo out of the 5.56, we're actually going to run IMI 77 grain Mark 262 clone ammunition. Now earlier, I ran this across the chronograph out of this barrel. I'm getting about 2660 for an average velocity. And accuracy seems to be in the 1 MOA range, pending me as the shooter. Again, 1 MOA, very acceptable. I'd even accept maybe up to 1.5 out of a DMR type rifle. So really happy with the accuracy. And I think the velocity out of both will get the job done easily to 800 yards and beyond. Finally, I'm going to run my AccuTac bipod. I've had a ton of comments around what bipod is this. It's an AccuTac. I think it's a WB5 that I'm going to run on both of these uppers. So from here, let's move into shooting. I've already shown you a couple of clips of what I did earlier at 100 yards. Let's move into steel. First up is going to be a 10-inch plate out there at about 530 yards, maybe a little bit further. And again, I want to get out at least to 800 and hopefully further if I'm making consistent hits. So let's do it. I bet we put our first rounds on steel with the six arcs. I got a 10 inch circle out there, 537 yards, and I got a handful of rounds loaded up. My shooter app is calling for 3.7 mils of elevation, so I'm just gonna hold that over in the reticle. And I got a decent left to right wind, so I'm gonna start by holding probably between that four and eight mile an hour wind dot. So here we go. Actually, I'm going to go to 8 mile an hour wind dot. Flag's pushing steady to the right. Off the right edge. We'll go between 8 and 12. Back. The left edge. Impact. So, pretty decent wind out there. A little bit of windage error, but we connected three out of five times. I'm happy with that. Let's push further. I thought we put our first rounds through the 556 at distance. I've got a 10 inch circle out there, 537 yards. According to my app, this IMI 77 grain should be about 4.1 mils of elevation to get out there. So I'm just going to hold that in the reticle. And pretty decent left to right out there. I don't know if you can see my wind flag pushing, but I'm going to favor left to the 8 mile an hour wind dot. Here we go. Impact. Impact. Don't look like it just went over the plate a little bit. over it. Impact. So three for five is decent performance out there. 
basically holding a mill to the left in a pretty decent wind. So let's see if we can't keep pushing out a little bit further. Let's push the six arc out a little bit further, 710 yards on a two thirds zip six. Now my app is calling for six mils of elevation. So I'm gonna go ahead and dial that on. There we go. And we're still facing that left to right wind. So I'm gonna start by holding a mill to the left. Just off the left edge. We'll cut that mill back to like 0.6. Impact. Let's cut that back to 0.5. Back to 0.4. Impact. Pack. So we went four for five, and the wind wasn't quite as aggressive as I thought. Happy with that run. Let's push further. Let's see what we can do with the 556 five, here at 710 yards on the two thirds zipsick. Got a handful of rounds loaded up. My app is calling for 6.6 .6 mils to get out there to 710, and we still got that left to right. I'm going to start by favoring left one mil. Let's see what we can do. Can't tell. So, might have been a T post hit because the light flashed, but it's flashed in the dirt low. Same hold. Okay. Just off that left edge. Man, that first round might have just caught the edge of the plate. Let's go point seven five. Impact. 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 Making pretty easy work from 710 yards with a 14 and a half inch 556. Five, Let's keep pushing the distance on the six arc. I have a full size Ipsic out there at 850 yards. You think about a DMR rifle, that's probably about the max distance where you would realistically engage a target. So it'll be fun to see how the six arc and the 556 five, perform out there. Now my app is calling for 8.2 mils. So I'm gonna go ahead and dial that on. And we're still facing that left to right wind. You see my wind flag is pushing pretty steady to the right. So I'm gonna go ahead and hold oh, two mils left and we'll see where we land wow off that right edge pretty far let's go 2.8 off the left edge Let's go up two tenths. All right, so it was just off the left. I'm gonna call that like two point, go 2.5. Just off the left edge. Man, cut back to two point. Uh, what do we call that? 2.2. .2. That flag is still pushing straight out. Off 
the left edge. Man, this is tough. 1.8. Impact, upper right shoulder, let's go to two. Impact, low left. Impact, pretty much dead center. Impact, pretty much dead center. So ultimately, I think we just went 50% out there. And the wind is pretty challenging. Two mils at 850. That's fun. It'll be interesting to see how the 556 five, stacks up. So I just had a bit of a camera fail here with the 556. Five, I finished firing the six arc upper, swapped over to the 556, five, and sent a string of rounds down there. Connected like four out of ten times. But when I went back to review the footage, I realized the trigger cam I had a dialed out of the field of view, maybe. So I'm gonna reshoot it. I need about 10.2 mils of elevation out there at 850 yards. To reshoot, I'm going to dial on 5, and then I'm going to hold 5.2 in the reticle. And windage-wise, it looks like I need about 2 mils unless conditions have changed. So let's put another 10 rounds down range and see how well we can connect on that full-size Ipsic at 850 with the 5.56. So again, I'm going to hold about 5.2, and I'm going to start 2 mils left. Impact. Impact. Just high over that right shoulder. Windage still look good. Impact. Off the right edge. Windage flag is pushing a little bit, so let's go 2.2. .2. Impact. That right edge. Drop low, windage look good. Impact. Impact. So I believe that might have actually been six impacts. So a 60% hit rate with the 5.56. Five, but again, not totally fair because I've already put some rounds down range versus the six arc. So full size Ipsic, 5.56, five, 850 yards, really not a problem, even in some decently tough windage. If you've been around my channel long, you know I love to push the limits on things. And with that, I've pushed the full-size Ipsic out, hopefully over a thousand yards. Let's go ahead and grab a range on that quick. And we'll see what it's going to take to get out there. All right, perfect. 1022, 1024. A lot of times many of you ask for the angle from my shooting position to the target. And right there, that measured a one degree incline. So basically flat. Now with that, let's take a look at what we're going to need for drop. So the first thing I'm going to do is go into my shooter app. And I'm going to tune up, in this case, the block two with the 77 grain ammo. And we'll put in 1,022. Atmosphere conditions are already in there. Oops, temperature, let's update that to about 75 degrees. We won't worry about wind. So that's calling for 14.3 mils to 10.22 for the 5.56. And then with the 6 arc and the 105 BTHP, we're calling for 11.4.
So in theory, about a three mil advantage to the six arc. So let's see what happens. First up will be the 556 at 1,022 yards. I got 10 rounds loaded up. And as I mentioned, my app called for 14.3 mils, which I've dialed on. It seems like things are really calm out here, but I can see that wind flag out there is definitely pushing to the right. You'll also notice I swapped over to the Tacticam because the trigger cam, whenever I try to dial this much elevation, it dials out of the field of view. I'm not sure what that's about. I'll follow up with trigger cam, but for now we're gonna use the Tacticam and I have dialed on the elevation. Now, 5.56 five, to 1,000 yards with a wind flag pushing to the right. Let's start at three mils and see what happens. Hopefully we can catch him splash. All right, we got splash. I'm gonna call it 2.4 and we need another half. So there's 14 point, or maybe I went six, 14.9. And let's go 2.2. All right, drop just under the plate. Windage look good. Let's go up three more. Actually, I went four. So now we're at 15.3. And we'll go to two. impact. I can't see where on the plate, but we'll try it again. I think it's high left actually. Impact. Definitely on the left edge. Let's cut back to 1.8. Impact. over that left shoulder. I'm not going to make any adjustments. Impact. High left over that shoulder. No adjustments. way high. Let's come down two tenths. So that velocity spread is where, you know, this bull is definitely going transonic. Stay at 1.8. Ah, just over that left shoulder. So I believe we just went 40% with the 556 at 1022 and we're at 15.1 mils of elevation. So let me swap to the six arc quick and we'll give it a run. So we just pulled the long range equivalent of a pit stop and threw the six arc upper on. And now we're ready to shoot that full size Ipsic out there at 1022. Now before we do that, I was gonna use the Raptar and just give you a look to verify the range. So I'll hold over the five mils where I'm zeroed. Range it and you can see it's 1024. Now my app called for 11.4 mils of elevation to get out there. So I'll go ahead and dial that on. And from here, let's go ahead and put some rounds on target. I remember the 556, we were holding like 1.8. So just for fun, let's start there. 1.8. That wind flag looks pretty calm. All right, so you saw that drop in the dirt. I'm going to call it a mil low. There's 12.4. And I'm going to say we need to cut back to like 1.2. 1.4. That wind flag is barely pushing.
just over the shoulder. I'm going to come down. I just came down to 12 mils. Impact. A lot more plate movement out of the six arc. Impact. 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 Ah, off the right edge. I believe that was seven impacts on that full size Ipsic at 1022 and we're at 12 mils. So this is where the six arc really separated itself from the 556. Five, so from here, let's wrap up. All right, I cannot wait to hear it. You gotta let me know in the comments, what did you think about that? What are your thoughts on how 556 five, stacked up against six arc? Do you believe there truly is an advantage to the six arc, or do you think 556 five, held its own? There's definitely pros and cons to each caliber, and I cannot wait to hear your thoughts as I run through a shooting review and then give you my thoughts here at the end. So with that, what did we see in the video? Well, I think we saw both calibers perform very well within distances that you would expect a DMR to be utilized, out to say 800, or in this case, 850 yards. Both calibers, even in the wind that we saw it here today, made many hits. Both of them went over 50% for an average hit ratio when you total all the hits and all the shots that I took in this video. So from a ratio percentage, I just added everything up and I'm finding out of all the shots we fired to include the rounds at 1,000 yards, the 5.56 had a 55% average hit ratio while the six arc had an average hit ratio of about 65%. So a little bit higher hit ratio out of the six arc. And what really separated things is when we pushed out to a thousand yards. So there at 537, we went three for five out of both calibers. Wind was a little bit trickier earlier in the day. So I had some challenges there out of both uppers due to windage, but we still connected 60% on that 10 inch plate. Then we pushed out to 710 on the two-thirds Ipsic where we had great hit percentages out of both uppers. We went four for five, if I remember right, out of the six arc. And we went, I want to say four for six out of the five, five, six, potentially five for six with that first round. Not exactly sure what happened there when it dumped into the dirt. At 850 yards, this is where I feel like we really saw things change. So yes, we had a higher hit percentage out of the five, five, six, but again, that was my second string of fire. But what I noticed was the drop. There was significantly more drop out of the 5.56 than the 6 arc. Off the top of my head, I want to say it was about 2 mils different versus earlier in the course of fire, we were only about a half to three quarters different. So we really saw the 5.56 start to drop off as we pushed out there to 850 yards. Now ultimately, 6 out of 10 out of a 5.56 at 850 yards on a full size visit is great. That's nothing to be disappointed about. And then the six arc, I went four for eight or 50%. And the way I was shooting, I feel like I could have kept dialing them in there and probably pushed that hit percent higher had I fired the 10 rounds, but six arc is expensive and hard to find. Because of how well we were shooting, I decided to push on out to a thousand yards or a little bit beyond. And this is where we really saw the difference. So out there at 1020, we went seven for 10 out of the six arc on a full size Ipsic and only four for 10 out of the 556. Five, and then we saw that drop, the difference grew even more. Over three mils drop difference between the 556 five, and the six arc. And what I noticed as a shooter was the six arc was moving that plate more and it was easier to spot my impacts. I believe I got on with the third round out of this one 
and it was either the third or fourth round out of the 5.56. Five, Things felt far more consistent out of the 6 arc, out there at 1,000 yards, than the 5.56 five, did. So all in all, great performance out of each upper. They're both very effective. Now what were my thoughts as the shooter? The things I noticed is recoil, maybe a little bit more recoil to the 6 arc, but really not bad. Both of them have a very soft recoil impulse. I felt like follow-up shots, if I'd really been pushing myself, definitely the edge would have gone to the 5.56. Five, five, the 6 arc isn't far behind. As a shooter, I felt more confident in shooting the 6 arc, especially as I pushed out beyond, say, that 800-yard range. I felt like the 6 arc just gave me a little bit more confidence to know that my rounds were going to be consistent and they were going to drop in where I wanted them. And I think we saw that in the performance out there at 850 and 1022. So it's hard to quantify that feeling of confidence, but that's what I felt with this. So ultimately, both of these uppers, 14 and a half inches, they made consistent hits all the way out to 850 yards. And both of them contacted out there at 1,000 yards. As a shooter, it's really important to be able to see what your bullet is doing down range, and that's where the edge goes to the 6 arc. More splash, more plate movement, easier to tell what's going on out of the 6 arc, maybe due to that heavier bullet moving the dirt around out there. And you got to remember, I'm shooting in ideal conditions. It's very dry out here, so there's a ton of dust that splashes up, makes it easier for me to see what's going on than maybe those of you shooting back east into vegetation. So if you're shooting into vegetation, Wow, 5.56 five, out there at 800, it's really hard. I've done it in the past, it's really, really hard. Just remember, these are ideal conditions that I'm shooting in. So overall, I think the advantages to six arc, same barrel length, would be more energy on target, easier to spot your splash and plate movement, and then flatter shooting. Also, it was hard to tell in the wind, I tried to shoot these as back to back as possible, but say out there at 1,000 yards, we saw much less windage hold out of the 6 arc than we did the 5.56, five, even though I felt like the wind conditions were very similar. So if you're looking for a dedicated DMR, it's hard to go wrong with 6 arc. The negative here definitely is going to be the cost and availability of ammo. 5.56 five, blows 6 arc out of the water every day of the week in that regard. It's way easier to find 5.56 five, ammo. Prices are coming down a little bit. So if you shoot a lot, it's hard to beat 5.56. Five, in my mind, if you're shooting, say, 600, 700 and in, 5.56 five, is a great choice. Where 6 arc comes into play is if you're trying to push maybe a little bit further. Maybe you primarily shoot 6 to 700 and in, but you have access to ground that's a little bit further. If I were you, I'd be looking at 6 arc. So with that, we'll wrap up the video. I got to know what you thought in the comments. Let me know what you think. Do you want to see more of these side-by-side -side comparison videos? I'm thinking we'll do 308, maybe 6.5 Creedmoor, maybe a short barrel 6.5 Creedmoor. Let me know. I'd love to hear it. Also, don't forget, check me out on Instagram at Mountains Mullets America. Ton of great conversations with many of you there. And then finally, I'm trying to grow this channel, and how I do that is your interaction. So if you want to help me grow this channel, drop a like on this video, comment on the video, and best of all, subscribe to my channel. I have a ton more content just like this in the works. And if you subscribe, you'll be in line to see it when it drops. So with that, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. A ton of new content in the works. I'll see you then. Back.